Hey guys, it's Ginger on Wheels here. Thanks for tuning in to another video where we are going to install the RevRide steering damper onto our VSET 10 Plus scooter. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you find this video useful, make sure to subscribe at the end. All right, let's get ready to put this thing on. All right, so as you can see, step one for me is going to be to just clean the scooter because this thing is absolutely filthy after that range test we did. I'm just gonna take my vacuum out, vacuum up as much as I can. And Hello, quick reminder here that the RevRides Fall Sale is happening now, and if you use the link in the description to buy a V-Set and enter the code GINGER50, you'll get a free accessory pouch, a free steering damper, and 50 bucks off. Okay, as you can see, we've got the V-Set 10 Plus mostly clean. Um, so the secret trick is to use a dry toothbrush and just go around the whole thing as much as you can. It takes about 10 minutes and then vacuum up all the stuff off the floor and go over it with a damp paper towel and it should be looking pretty new-ish. So let's go ahead and get started with the steering damper install. I've already opened it up. This is what is in the package. I've got a longer bolt, a shorter bolt, and these look thicker. And then there's two long, two medium, and two shorts. And then there's two spacers here. There's a longer spacer, and then there is a shorter spacer. This piece goes on to here at some point. One, two, three mounting brackets. Okay, so step one is to take our two mounting pieces that look like this. One says rev rides on the side, and this is gonna go here, and the rev rides thingy is gonna go up alongside the neck. So we're gonna take these two pieces, connect them together, there's a little slot, and then in the bottom, you're gonna install the shorter five millimeter screws. Okay, so when it's attached, you have something that looks like this with the RevRides logo on the left. Step two, just unscrew these two deck screws. These are three millimeter. You wanna take those out of the deck completely. We're gonna take the little thingy that we just built and we're gonna place it right there so that this groove, this groove goes right onto that little neck piece right there. Okay, once we have that in place, we're gonna take these two longer four millimeter screws and we're just gonna screw them right into the old deck hole screws. It should go without saying, but you want these to be pretty darn tight. Make sure you have your tool inserted all the way into the threads of the screw before you start cranking on it though, because you don't want to strip these screws. The next step is to take a 2.5 millimeter hex key and you want to unscrew this little grub screw right here. And there's one on this side and there's one on the other side as well. You want to take them out completely. Okay, the one on the opposite side over here came out pretty easily, but this one is on really tight. This is what they look like though little grub screws. All right, so I took the grub screw out on this side, but the one on this side is stuck in there pretty good. So I'm gonna see, let's cross our fingers and hope that I don't strip this thing. That is in there really, really tight. Like I'm gonna actually strip the threads of my screwdriver. So what I'm gonna do is get a heat gun and blast this thing with heat for a little bit and hopefully that'll loosen up. Maybe there's some Loctite on there that I can loosen. These projects are never as simple as they say they're gonna be. Okay, so here's my heat gun. They're not expensive. You can get them for like 20 bucks on Amazon, but I'm gonna put it on the low setting and blast this little thingy with heat and hopefully loosen that grub screw up a bit. You wanna be careful where you're pointing the heat gun and how close it is to plastic things. You obviously don't wanna be pointing it down because you can melt the fender. So I'm just pointing it kind of at an angle over the top like that. Okay, that's been a couple minutes. Hopefully I don't have to do it for too long. Let's see if it comes out. Yep, coming out. Wow, they must have put Loctite on this one for some reason. It's getting stuck again. I'm actually gonna heat it up again for longer.
Okay, I'm gonna give it another shot and see what happens. Hopefully you don't have to do this, but you know, stuff happens sometimes. These things aren't made perfectly. It's coming out. It's just very, very hard to do. I don't know why they Loctited this one and not the other one. Or maybe it's just slightly bent here. We'll see when we pull it out. Okay, it's coming out now. Whew, there it is, okay. So it does look like there's a little bit of goober on the end. There is some Loctite, I don't know what's going on there, but heat gun helps. So if you need to, do that. Okay, for the next step, we're gonna take this last little mount piece that we have that looks like this. This little piece right here, just slides right over the front like that. And we are going to take our, these look like shorter four millimeter screws. Just gonna take this and there are two lock washers included with the kit. So I'm gonna put my lock washer on here and I'm gonna put that right where the grub screw was. I think that's in. Let's do the other side now, which goes in super easily for some reason. So here's the screw on the other side. Just screw this baby right in hand tight, no problem. But you wanna make sure the lock washers are on these two screws when you put them in. And make sure that they go in as tight as possible. All right, we are in the home stretch. So let's go ahead and get this thing finished. We got this front bracket on, that was the hardest part for sure. This was pretty easy. But now that we have these two brackets installed, we're going to take this piece and this piece and you just slide this over there. So in the kit that we got, there are the spacers and screws and the longer spacer goes with the longer screw. This is a five millimeter long screw. And then you have a shorter spacer with a shorter screw and the short screw is the one that goes in here. So we're gonna take our actual damper unit. You want the spacer on this side. You wanna do that. So you have the screw going through the hole on the damper and then the spacer right there. And then this just goes in right here and you tighten this in with a five millimeter hex wrench. nice and tight Ugh. okay then we're gonna take this little piece right here slide it over the end of the damper we're gonna take our longer spacer and put it on top of this bracket right here take this little slidey piece and line it up and take the longer screw and screw it through the spacer into the bracket and then again take your five millimeter wrench and tighten that up Okay, so now you can see this is how we have our damper installed here. All the different pieces, the lower bracket, the longer bracket, the actual damper itself goes out front like that. This screws into the bracket we mounted in front. And the only thing left to do, you'll notice this still moves like this. So we need to tighten this screw right here to actually lock this thing into place. Okay, one important thing that I screwed up the first time that you know, this is why you watch these videos. You want to align this front clamp piece towards the front of the damper. You don't want it to be in the middle because then you can't turn the bars to the right. Okay, so when I turn the bars all the way to the right, there's a tiny bit of space in between this little bushing and the actual um, damper piece. And then the mount is maybe like a quarter inch off the top right there. So that is perfect in my opinion. If you look down the bars now, when we turn left and right, you can see there's about as much left as there is right steering. So that's perfect. Yep, that's tight. Wow, it goes tighter. How tight does this get? Oh, <laughs> tightest setting, you can't even turn it. Wow. And then I assume on the loosest setting, it feels like stock. Not quite. It's a little bit tighter than stock, but it still works. This piece still does move side to side like this. 
because the damper actually needs to move like that while when it's in use. You can see on the front here, it's like rotating on this um, little bearing inside of here and here. The damper actually rotates a little bit and moves. So there is some play there, but that's to be expected. All right, well that was a little bit more work than I thought it was gonna be. I'd never installed a damper before, but I'm glad I got one on there now. It's on the VSET 10 Plus. And when you buy the VSET 10 Plus from RevRides right now during the fall sale, you get one of these dampers for free. So you can reduce your likelihood of getting speed wobbles and make it a nice, more secure ride, allegedly. We'll take it out for some test rides and I'll let you know how it performs maybe in the next few days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys for the next episode.